Dave Palumbo here with another supplement and science edition, and we're going to talk about today high blood sugars. Look, a lot of people in today's world have diabetes, which is running high blood sugars. Basically means that your pancreas, okay, specifically the beta cells of the pancreas, which produce insulin, are not doing their job, okay? Because the job of the pancreas and the beta cells specifically, and the insulin producing cells, is to, is to release this insulin to take the sugar in the blood and feed the cells, whether it be the brain, the muscle cells, the liver, wherever. When those cells are filled up, okay, the rest goes into fat storage. Okay, that's what insulin does. It clears sugar from the blood. The problem is as we get older, okay, we lose what we call insulin sensitivity or we can't produce enough insulin. If you don't produce enough insulin and blood sugar start running higher and higher, that excess blood sugar starts accumulating in the tissues of our body specifically the filtering apparatus of the kidneys, which can lead to kidney failure later in life. It can accumulate in the extremities, the, the capillary beds of our fingers and toes. That can cause compromised circulation, which can cause amputation later in life and, and ulceration. Uh, it can accumulate in our eyes, in the retinas of our eyes. It can cause vision loss as we get older. And it, now we're finding that it can accumulate in the brain. They're calling uh, the Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes because blood sugar accumulates in the vessels of the brain. And then we, we can't remember stuff. We get dementia early because of this. So this is a very real phenomenon. Now, compound that in the bodybuilding world with you know guys who take growth hormone. Growth hormone works the opposite of insulin. They're antagonistic to each other. They do the opposite. So when you have a lot of growth hormone in your body, okay, more than you normally should, what happens is the insulin doesn't work as well. It can't get to its receptor. It can't do its job. So a lot of bodybuilders find that they run high fasting blood sugars in the morning or even during the day for that matter. But the first phase of insulin failure is fasting blood sugars that are too high in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, you test your blood sugar, it should be under 90, okay? The new theory is even under 85, but under 90. Now on blood work, it says under 100, but that's, that's still too high. Under 90 is, is the dogma. When you wake up and test your blood sugar, it should be under 90. A lot of people start running, especially as they get older, oh, 95, 100, 105. I see 120 in some bodybuilders that they sent me blood work. I'm like, or they, I have a lot of these guys that I work with and girls test their blood sugars in the morning. So they get up, first thing they do, test blood sugars. I want to know what the fasting blood sugars are. And they're running high. I would say more than 30% of the people that I work with. That's a lot, okay? What can we do for this? Other than taking insulin, other than taking gluco, you know, glucophage or metformin, which are things that will help lower the sugars. I don't like pills, to be honest. I think the pill remedies are not necessarily, I think the Band-Aids, basically, they're not necessarily um, helping to solve the problem. So for me, to solve the problem, there's only one or two ways of doing it. One would be to take insulin because you're just not producing enough and maybe you're you resign to the fact that your cells are just not producing enough insulin, okay? Uh, that to, seems a little more extreme. The other is to try to fix what's going wrong. Why? Do we have high fasting blood sugars in the morning? Well, what happens is when we go to sleep at night, okay, um, there's an organ in our body known as the liver. We know what the liver does. It detoxifies you know, the, 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 the chemicals in our body, okay? Breaks them down. But the liver also produces glucose. It is the process known as gluconeogenesis, the production of new glucose from amino acids. When we wake up in the, before we wake up in the morning, you, you get a surge in a hormone known as cortisol. Cortisol tells the liver essentially to produce glucose. Why? Because the body needs to be ready when it gets up to, to do something. It, it needs blood sugar in the blood to enable the body to, to, for the muscles to function and to work. This is probably a remnant from prehistoric times when if a saber-toothed tiger tried to kill you, you know, five in the morning, you got up fast, you had energy in your, in your you know, you had sugar in your blood to actually fuel the processes to make your body run fast and get away from this tiger. Um, we, we don't live in times of like, you know, stress like that, although I got to be honest with you, having a couple of young kids is, <laughs> who wake up during the night is almost comparable to that because I'm always jumping out of bed, you know, and waking up like that. But the key is if our bodies are overproducing glucose via this process and the pancreas cannot keep up with it because maybe we got a little older, pancreas is not quite as sharp as it used to be, we run these high blood sugars and these things happen every single day the accumulation of this leads to all the side effects I talked about earlier. What can be done? Well, I found something that really helps. First of all, I've been talking about for years the use of, a, of soluble fiber as a way to lower 
the output of glucose from the liver. Why? Because when soluble fiber, okay, especially in a product like Fiberlyze, my uh, species nutrition product, we use a very high, um, what's called high swell rate psyllium. Psyllium is, is eight times more potent on a gram for gram basis than any other source of soluble fiber out there. So when you compare it to oat bran, which is like the gold standard, um, Fiberlyze and the psyllium in Fiberlyze is eight times more potent. So when you use a fiber product like Fiberlyze, that has a psyllium content with a very high swell rate, when it gets to the colon, the bacteria there, the probiotic or good bacteria will ferment this product, okay, and use it as food almost. And they produce short and medium chain triglycerides as a result, which go back to the liver through the bloodstream and it tells the liver, stop producing so much glucose. So a fiber supplement, especially right before bed, which is when I use mine, I get my, my fiber lies out, I get my scoop in here, okay, I haven't done my fiber today, so I'm going to show you how I do it. I put a scoop in there, one scoop, that's all it takes, and I do this twice a day, but I especially do it before bed. The key with this is mix it up for maybe 20, 30 seconds the most. Don't let it sit because it's going to swell. Remember, psyllium swells. So before it starts swelling, you drink this stuff down. Ah, see? Fast. It's down. Now it's going to be in my stomach and it's going to start swelling and doing what psyllium is supposed to. When it gets to my colon, it will be fermented, some of it, and it, that will tell my liver stop producing so much goddamn glucose, okay? So that's, that's one benefit, especially overnight, and it's gonna have that effect. Now, another thing that I've discovered recently, because I was noticing that my blood sugars were a little higher than I was comfortable with. Sometimes it'd be a little over 90, sometimes it would be mid-90s, and I couldn't really pinpoint what was going on. However, I did notice when I added Fiberlyze at night, it, it improved, but not enough. What I noticed was that when I, I have another product called Protolyze. Protolyze is not a, a pure whey isolate. It's a whey isolate mixed with casein. The reason Protolyze is, is an instant protein pudding. If you mix it with two ounces of water, one serving, you get 30 grams of protein, and you have instant pudding. And I've made that before. But what I do is, before bed, I make it almost as a shake. Because a lot of times I work out at night. So I'll take here, it's a very big, it's a decent sized scoop. It's a little bigger than the way I sold scoop. And I'll put, pour that in here, as I have water in this. I'll put it in here. You can shake it up, you can mix it with a spoon. All my protein powders mix very, very, very easily because they're very pure. And if you mix it in water, it'll give you a little bit thicker consistency than say the whey isolate will because there's casein in here. And but what the casein does, it takes longer to digest. So I drink this down. I'm not gonna gulp it down. The vanilla I, uh, protolyze is probably the, one of the best tasting, I'll pour it in here so you can see what it looks like. It's probably one of the best tasting um, products that I make. It, it has a slightly better taste, I think, than isolize because it's a little thicker. Isolize is pure, of course, so for people who are dieting and stuff like that, who might not who want the, the absolute purest, obviously you go with isolize, but protolyze before bed. I have, even my dieting athletes, I use, we use protolyze before bed. You can make it as a pudding or you can make it as a shake. I make it as a shake usually because I'm a little thirsty after I weight train. Either way is fine. I drink this down and I'm telling you the combination of these two. When I wake up in the morning, okay, I have blood sugars that have been running under 80, 78, 77, 79. And never have I seen that in, in recent years. And I, I test my blood sugar every morning. I have, I have probably for the last five years, I know what my blood sugars have been. This combination, and I want you to see, Protolyze, and we have Protolyze in chocolate and vanilla. I like the vanilla. I think the vanilla is the best flavor I make. The vanilla Protolyze, and I either do mango or I do fruit punch Fiberlyze. And usually I do this first, and then I'll do this after. I don't, some people mix them together. I think it's too thick. I just don't like it that way. I enjoy savoring the Protolyze, and then I do the, uh, the, the Fiberlyze. Those two before bed, every single night, and I've done a controlled study on myself. Obviously, I'm only a sample size of one, but if I don't do the Protolyze, okay, before bed, my blood sugars run a little, little higher. They're still under 90 with the Fiberlyze. If I don't run either one, I'm borderline. I'm borderline. I'm running like 90, 89, sometimes 95. It depends what I ate the night before. So these two will suppress my blood sugar and keep it normal, which tells me that they're affecting the liver. It's the only thing that can be working. Think about it. Eating, if you have an insulin production problem in your pancreas, eating more food before bed, you know, 
is not going to help the problem. Matter of fact, fasting you think would improve it. But if I don't eat anything before bed, my blood sugars were going higher. So I'm thinking it's got, it can't be from the food I'm eating. It's got to be from what my body, my liver is producing. When I put these two in there together, okay, both of them, I have the lowest okay, or the best suppression of blood sugar in the morning, which means that these two are telling the liver, stop producing so much glucose. And my pancreas is able to handle the load that they are producing, which is a normal load. I think I was overproducing, you know, maybe because I don't sleep as much. I wake up a lot during the middle of the night, but I see this in bodybuilders, and I'm telling more and more people to start employing this, this strategy, and it's working. It's working for everyone I've told so far. So if you guys have tested your blood sugar, you're running high, even if you know, if your mother who doesn't work out, Try these two together. Try one, then try the other, and then try them together. I guarantee you will see a synergistic effect from these two together. Fiberlize, a scoop before bed, and 30 grams of the, which is one serving of Protolize. You could even, some of them I even do a half a serving. This, yeah, I'm not that hungry. I'll do 15 grams of protein worth. Like half a scoop of this, one scoop of that. And I'm telling you, your blood sugars will improve. Look, you could go on insulin, you could take metformin if you want when your doctor prescribes it, but I'm telling you, you must control those blood sugars. If not, you will have side effects and it, you will have health ramifications later in life. So you decide how you want to solve the problem. You want to do it the natural way or you want to just go, go to the pharmaceutical way. This might not work for you. You might have to go pharmaceutical. Try this first. I'm, I promise you, you'll be shocked. I'm Dave Palumbo here with a supplement and science review.